Hello, this is Damadoc82, and uh, we are in the From the Depths uh, designer mode here, and uh, I want to go over some basics on building flyers today. Now, for me, in From the Depths, there are three main types of flyers. Uh, the first one would be basically your pure a airplane which use wing parts for control and can change their altitude at will. Uh, these airplanes can be given uh, jet thrusters, ion thrusters, or duddy blades, it don't matter, just so as long as they're flying. And, they're, uh, and uh, then the next type, there's thruster craft. Now, thruster craft can use a combination of thrusters and wing parts for control and can change their altitude at will. Um, thruster craft, uh, you can use them to basically build just about any type of aircraft you can think of almost. Um, uh, the cool thing about thrusters in uh, one of these later versions of uh, From the Depths, even 2.4.9, which is the version that I play in, um, a lot of those thrusters you can actually hide. And uh, you won't even know that they're there most of the time, but we'll get into that later. Um, now then, a, uh, the third type that we have is a hover, which essentially would be like an airship. Um, something that it's something that uh, is uh, very common that you would see all over Neater. Just about every faction seems to have at least some type of airship. Um, they. They typically try to maintain a constant altitude and they function almost like a ship. Um, th you can do some things with the uh, with a PID to try to make it change its altitude. But uh, we'll, we'll get into that kind of stuff later. Now then, now that we've gone over the three types of aircraft, uh, also, by the way, um, Helicopters, I think, would also fall under the uh, hover category. But anyway, uh, now that we talked about the three types, um, let's go into the build menu over here and uh, let's talk about some of the uh, parts here that we have under here. Now, you have like about four different types of thrusters that you can use. Um, one of my favorites uh, that we're going to start off with here is the Deddy Blades. Now the great thing about Deddy Blades is they can work under the water, they can work in the air, they can work without power, and if you add engine power it increases their, uh, uh, their thrusting ability significantly. Um, they're at the moment, they're, you can put them just about anywhere, but uh, I think in later versions of From the Depths, they are planning on changing that, so yeah. Um, it might not, not that uh, that ability might not be valid here after a while. But uh, it's, it's a great thing to use, and uh, a lot of airships actually use these to help them maintain their altitude, and uh, even for control, like uh, their pitch and yaw and roll and all that which some things we'll get into here a little bit later but uh, for now I just wanted to show you, you know, uh, the uh, deadly blades here um, the base part of the deadly blade is this part right here the spinner this is actually the part that you would attach to the hull this part right here you can stack this on top of it an infinite number of times it don't matter um, that alone can actually get you some thrust but if you want to expand on the amount of thrust that you need, you'll need the dedicated heli blade extensions. Um, you can make deadly blades as essentially as big as you want, uh, and uh, the bigger they are generally, the better they're going to work. So yeah, that's deadly blades. Um, an important thing to note about deadly blades, though, is that they will not work outside of the atmosphere everywhere else they're pretty much just fine now moving on we're going to go into jet engines here we're going to talk about them for a moment 
Um, some of these you're probably already familiar with. You have them in like four different varieties. Uh, these two right here are essentially the same. They're gonna uh, they cost just as much. They have the same armor, same health, same everything. Essentially, they just look different. This one is just they're both basically for aesthetic choices is the reason why they're they're different like that. This one is just to mount flush with the hull. And this one right here is to kind of give you a conical shape. So then we have the larger jet engines, which are basically like nine times the size of these up here and use up about nine times the amount of resources and power. Uh, these are like one by ones, and uh, these right here are three by three. Uh, basically, you got the same thing going on here, kind of the huge jet engine and the flush jet engine. The, they're essentially the same aside from looks. So yeah, that's the jet engines. Um, they do not work underwater and they will work in the atmosphere up to a point. After you get outside the atmosphere, they do not work nearly as well. But they provide a lot of thrust. Alright, so moving on. Uh, next we got the ion thrusters. Ion thrusters are pretty cool, except uh, they can, as you can see here, they're pretty expensive. And they're kind of like the jet thrusters, as in they got uh, two different types of shapes here, mainly for aesthetic purposes. And uh, they got them in uh, a larger variant size too as well. Like you got this huge ion thruster down here. It's basically a 3x3 three three of this version right here. Same thing with the square ones over here. So yeah, as you can see here, the, the cost and the force is going to be roughly about the same if you have nine of these versus one of these and the same thing over here. Now the great thing about ion thrusters is they work everywhere. Um, they'll work underwater, they'll work in atmosphere, and they'll work in space. However, they do not work near as efficiently underwater or in atmosphere as they do in space. Okay. Um, you're going to need significantly more of these and also uh, for your more high speed craft, uh, it's probably a good idea to use these, mainly for the point that uh, there is no upper limit to how much speed that you can get out of them, which is something I probably should have mentioned earlier because jet engines, they'll get you up to about 100 meters per second. Uh, beyond that, you're going to have a lot harder time trying to push that envelope a little bit more. But with iron thrusters, you don't really have that same limitation. Plus, you can use them to get out into space where basically you don't have to worry about drag or anything like that. And you can pretty much go about as fast as you want as long as you can put enough engines on and have enough power to support them. Uh, these engines work, as far as uh, getting power, it's the same way as the, uh, the jet thrusters. Uh, they'll get it either from an electric engine or a fuel engine, if you have either or available. Uh, steam engines can also work. Don't get me wrong, just anything that provides power will will work with uh, with that. Uh, same thing with the Deddy Blades. Uh, you can get engine from a uh, electric engine, a fuel engine, or a steam engine. Doesn't matter as long as it's power. Anyway. So then we're going to get ourselves into the custom jets. Now these things are a lot more complicated. Um, in the current version, there's actually a one by one version of it, but here in this version, uh, it only exists in a three by three. So anyway, um, first off, you have to start with your jet controller. All right, this is essentially uh, the uh, part that uh, that controls uh, the rest of the jet. And then before your uh, jet controller, well, actually it'd probably be best if I just kind of uh, gave you a, a rough 
look at how these things are supposed to go together. So we're going to go ahead and select the jet controller. You just put it down like that. Now compressors, they go in front of the jet controller. And intakes, they go in front of the compressors. And then on the back you have combustors. You can just slap those on as many as you want. And uh, then you have exhaust. Now technically right there, um, this is almost a completely functioning custom jet engine. There's just one important thing that it needs and that is the fuel injector. If you don't have these, the, your custom jet engines will not function whatsoever because there is no way to get fuel into said engine. Now all these other bits and bobs here, uh, the air intake add-ons, you can add them onto the, uh, the air intakes like so. Same thing with the extra compressors, you can add them on like so. They connect only to those three parts, or the, uh, not the three parts, but four parts of the uh, the 3 by 3 custom jet engine. And same here with the back, you can uh, put extra combustors back here. Like so. Now, the compressors and the air intakes, those actually will add efficiency to the engine. And the combustion part is actually where the the fuel will actually be burned. However, not a lot of people know this, but we can take this off and this off and this. And technically right now we still have a viable jet engine. It's not going to be nearly as efficient, but with all, at all that extra stuff on the front of it, it does make it more compact. And as I stated earlier, you can make this as long as you want. Uh, technically, you don't even really need this exhaust part on the back. And this right here is still going to be a viable engine. That might change later in later versions, I don't know. But uh, this is a type of configuration that I actually use very often in a lot of aircraft that I build. So yeah, you you can use the compressors and the uh, intakes to try to get better efficiency out of your engine. But uh, generally, you, you don't really need them. And that's that's something that a lot of people are not aware of, unfortunately. So yeah, that is custom jet engines. And let's see here, is there anything else I want to go over? Yes. Um, next part I want to talk about here is wing parts. Now, the actual wing piece itself, I don't really mess with these a whole lot, but they do provide a, a lot of lift. Um, of course, your vehicle has to be going forward in order for said lift to be applied to it. Now, the thing is, is that these can almost provide a bit too much lift. Um, and that is a problem that a lot of new people who try to get into jets and planes and that kind of thing figure out is that uh, their aircraft will go directly into space or start doing loop-de-loops and uh, the reason is is because they have way too many of these and they have way too much lift okay it's actually better to go with ailerons and you only need a few of these um, but when you put uh, wings on it's best to go with the uh, maybe just slightly behind the center of mass at least that's the way that I've heard it um, with the ailerons, though, I actually use these a lot more, and uh, they they just seem to perform a lot better because not only do they seem to serve a wing function, but they'll also give you pretty good roll control, and uh, they're pretty cheap as compared to using these jet engines here that uh, that can give you some roll control. 
it's significantly cheaper uh, by like 10 times less as you can see here uh, next we have is the tailplane it literally just think of it as like the back of a plane um, it controls uh, your your rudder and your elevator which is pretty much like two of these wrapped into one uh, it's going to uh, control your left to right movement and your, uh, well, left to right as far as where the nose is pointing, uh, no, the nose of the aircraft. And uh, it'll also control your vertical movement as in the nose pointing up or down. Uh, moving on, we have the uh, elevator, which is uh, usually found at the back of most aircraft. Um, you can't put these in the nose, but you have to do some fiddling with it to make it work correctly. But these will control the uh, the nose of the aircraft uh, uh, to help it point up or down. Uh, down here, uh, you have the uh, aerial rudder, and uh, basically that makes you go makes the uh, nose of the aircraft point left and right. Okay, so. Then you get into with this little odd duckling down here, which is the universal flight surface. Um, think of it as kind of a Swiss army knife of a kind of like all of these kind of in one. Uh, you can go into controls and specifically set what this is going to do for you. I genuinely do not use these. I haven't really found a use for them yet, but I'm sure there's some people out there who have. Um, I imagine you guys have probably looked over here at the helium pump. Uh, this thing, uh, from what I understand here recently, it has gotten a buff, so building blimps with it is viable, or more so viable. Uh, genuinely, you want to build the uh, the balloon part of your blimp out of something that's very light, probably like light alloy or... I think I've seen a few people do it out of wood. Don't quote me on that, but yeah, uh, it, just think of it as uh, kind of almost like an air pump in a ship, except uh, in this case, it's filling the space with helium. And uh, just like a balloon, you don't want to have any holes in it because it's just going to let the helium out and you're going to lose lift and yeah, it's just going to be a big mess. Over here we have hot air balloon deployers. These things are very useful for getting your aircraft back into the air if they happen to splash down in the water. A little less useful in Ashes of the Empire because usually when planes smack into the surface of uh, the ground, they, they tend to stay there. But uh, yeah, a lot of my aircraft were purposely built for Ashes of the Empire, so a lot of them haven't been using hot air balloon deployers. So, yeah. Uh, these uh, will... Well, you can set up a AI routine to where these will automatically deploy for you whenever the aircraft uh, goes into the water and will help get it back up in the air. Because like I was saying earlier with the jet engines, they do not work in water whatsoever. These will help pull them up out of the water so these guys can start working again. Uh, it's the same thing with the custom jet engines. They do not want to work in water either. They can work in pretty high altitudes, but not in the vacuum of space. That's something I probably should have mentioned earlier. They do, but they are, th as far as thrusters go, these things are the most, uh, provide the most thrust, bar none. And uh, since it's custom, you can essentially tailor it to whatever type of need that you want. But they do not provide any engine power whatsoever. You actually will need a separate fuel engine or steam engine or uh, maybe an electrical engine setup. So, yeah. Uh, lastly, we have the jet stabilizers. Um... Back in the days before PID was a thing, uh, these jet stabilizers were used uh, kind of in the same way. Uh, 
basically they would stabilize your craft according to what side that they were put on. Like if you put them on the left and right side, it would keep your craft from wobbling to the left or right. Uh, if you put them on the front or back, it would keep uh, your craft from wobbling up and down, at least the uh, the, uh, the nose of it. So that's where these you know, what came in handy. Uh, these helicopter blades, um, they're kind of like the Deddy blades, but uh, they're for your more hardcore helicopter enthusiasts, I don't really mess with them all myself. Uh, they are, I'm sure they have their uses, but uh, I sadly am not too knowledgeable in them. I'm more comfortable with using the uh, Deddy Blades down here. So, yeah, um, we probably don't need to go into wheels too much. Uh, that's more like tank stuff. So yeah, we'll just uh, cut it off here for the, um, as far as going over the parts. All right, now some of you older uh, veterans of FTD will probably already know some of this stuff, but I felt that this was something important to include for some of the uh, newer people. Um, when it comes to FTD um, craft, I mean, I know this is a plane right here, but the uh, Virtually any aircraft in FTD, uh, they are bound by these same three uh, movements that you are seeing right here that I'm showing in this picture that uh, I lifted off of uh, Wikipedia. So you have uh, three different axes that a vehicle can move in. You have your yaw which would basically have the nose of your craft turning left and right kind of like you would in a car then you have what's called pitch uh, this will make the nose of your craft go up or down and then thirdly you have roll which would make it tilt to the left or tilt to the right so these three motions are very important to know when it comes to building aircraft because you have to know what direction or which one of these uh, axes the AI is supposed to be using. So that's why I kind of wanted to briefly go over them. But as I said, these axes, they, they do apply to pretty much about every craft and from the depths. So I yeah, just want to give you guys a, uh, a brief look at that and uh, see what the uh, what it means when someone talks about yaw, pitch, or roll because those are terms that I'm probably going to be using a whole lot. Alright, so I just wanted to give you guys uh, a lot of the basics before we got into building anything. Um, next time in uh, the tutorial series... I'm going to show you guys how to build a little uh, plane like this. Um, it's a very, very simple aircraft. And uh, I'm going to show you guys how to build it step by step. Uh, as you can see, it uh, it works a lot like... Well, just uh, watching a dive here on the uh, Marauder. It, it just goes in for a nice strafing run. Then it just veers off and uh, circles back around for another attack run. It's very, very cool to watch. Yeah, I'll be showing you guys how to build this next time. So, uh, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Hope you guys got something from this. And keep your hammer high. Later.